Yo, what's up, everybody? It is Friday, January 27th. I was out today. Hey, still in L.A. I was out at Joshua Tree National Monument. I love that place. If you've never been there, it's about a two-hour, two-and-a-half-hour ride from L.A. out east. Just, like, amazing formations of uh, desert rocks, like these round boulders piled up and the famous Joshua tree plants everywhere. It's a great place. Anyway, uh, just got back tomorrow. I will be heading back to New York City. Yeah, but uh, I enjoyed my stay here in LA. Anyway, market was up today, but it ended up giving uh, most of today's gains back. By the end of the day, we ended positive. A couple of things I want to show you, which I find very funny. Um, and I said this was going to happen. You guys, you know, I've been telling you this. I said that these, these bearish bets, these monetarist zombies, uh, they're going to start throwing in the towel. And ironically, you know, one of the scenarios I laid out for you yesterday was they're going to start throwing in the towel up until like June. And then we're going to hit that hard debt ceiling where the treasury has no more room to maneuver and we have a virulent extremist um, deficit hawk uh, caucus in the House of Representatives run by this this idiot uh, monetary um, system dope named Chip Roy from Texas who thinks that the government's finances are like a household anyway uh, a, a, a lot of a lot of hell could be unleashed on the economy in the second half of this year if we don't get this debt ceiling resolved and if they go into full-blown austerity and that's just going to be a race to the bottom anyway but i said getting back to what i started out with you know i said that these monitor zombies are going to throw in the towel i mean they they've you know the other day i i, I talked about um i forget even what it was how they're trying to rationalize you know, yeah, that one guy, Alf, said, uh, it must be that they think there's going to be QE. Meanwhile, the Fed is saying nothing about QE. If anything, they're doubling down on their tough guy, hawkish uh, commentary and, and, you know, remarks. But the, the monetarist zombies, they, they got to rationalize it somehow. But some of them, some of them right now are starting to throw in the towel. Like today, I saw one headline uh, saying, like, uh, th this is a massive short squeeze going on, which again, I told you that was going to happen. And then another one, uh, it was a headline saying that Goldman Sachs, the biggest bear at Goldman Sachs uh, is, is kind of throwing in the towel saying like the market just doesn't want to go down. I mean, it doesn't look like this market, like, like I love this, like these, these people are getting paid you know, millions and millions of dollars to tell you that, oh, the market looks like it doesn't want to go down. This, this is the analysis. This is, I mean, folks, do you, do you understand? You see what I'm trying to point out? I've been over 40 years on Wall Street. Like, I know a lot of these people. Imbeciles. It, they, you know, no understanding whatsoever. They operate under an analytical framework that, again, is, is a really, really poorly understood, you know, from them, single variable analytical framework, which is monetarism, which again, they really don't understand. And at the end of the day, I mean, if you, if you operate under an analytical framework like that, which is so limited and which you really don't have a full grasp of in terms of you know, the consequences of that, uh, of the implementation of that policy, however it's implemented, whether it's cutting rates or raising rates or QE or QT, if you really don't understand what that's all about, you know, you're going to get it wrong at least half the times. And the times you get it right, you're only going to get it right because, you know, it's the broken clock is right twice a day. I mean, you're just going to happen to be aligned on the right side um, in spite of the, in spite of yourself. Okay. So the biggest bear at Goldman is, is throwing in the, in, the, in the towel, not because he says, hey, you know, I realize now that we are back into a very significant fiscal expansion after, 
you know, the record contraction in fiscal support last year, you know, that would be something if he actually came out and said, oh, yeah, you know, I, I realize now what's going on. No, he just says it just doesn't feel they're like it wants to go down. This is a top guy. It just doesn't feel like it wants to go down. Folks, how many of you actually follow these people? How many of you actually base your investment decisions on stuff like this? I mean, really, I want you to sit back. I want you to process this. These are, these are the biggest of the big shots on Wall Street. And this is the stuff they're telling you. It just doesn't feel like it wants to go down. I mean, what is this? What is this? Seriously. So, um, and hopefully what I bring here is an understanding. What I bring here is, is, is an education. What I bring here is, is information that you could utilize. What I bring here is, is mental game. It's, it's, you know, I'm trying to hold your hand. I'm trying to educate and help you get through a lot of times when things are rough for legitimate reasons, like last year when we had this record $2 trillion contraction in fiscal. You know, I said, this is what's happening. This is the reason. You know, it's like when lightning strikes, when, when there's lightning, you know, thousands of years ago, primitive people thought that was the anger of the gods throwing lightning bolts down because the gods were angry. But now we know because of science, those are electrical charges in the air and it's nothing to get concerned about unless you're walking outside in an open field and, and you happen to be, you know, uh, 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 potentially uh, a place where lightning could strike you personally. But we know what these phenomenon are, okay? So there's no reason, they might be scary when you hit a boom and the lightning flash and the crash. But other than that, can you calm yourself down because you understand what's going on? Same thing here. Same thing here. But apparently not for the big shots on Wall Street, which maybe many of you follow these people. I don't know. I would hope not because I think a lot of you come to my channel to get informed to get educated to have to open up your mind to ideas to question things question the mainstream question what is considered you know the 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 status quo the highest level of understanding which is no understanding whatsoever plain and simple so that's where we are now i also said just diverging from this little uh, rant that i just did right now i said that uh, I told you that the market, to me, got a little bit ahead of itself. Um, we're still down. Because of the tax drains that happened this month, we're actually still about $3 billion below where we were on December 14th before that uh, quarterly corporate tax drain. Okay? Uh, we went all the way up in the beginning of June. Uh, to like 63 billion over the level of that December 14th, but then it got all drained back down again. So now we're actually two to three. I think it was like 2.7 billion below. So we're we're about equal in terms of financial balances uh, to where we were on December 14th. Now I said that the market's going to stall here and probably going to have a little bit of a pullback because it got it ahead of itself. But I also said that February, February should be a big month because we get a quarterly uh, interest payment that's going to be like, you know, 45, 48 billion on top of the normal monthly spending. Also, don't forget, February is the beginning of, uh, you know, the, the acceleration in or uh, the pickup, I should say, in, in IRS tax refunds. So. Checks will be going out to people. People will be credited back, you know, their refunds. That's a positive. February, uh, March, and April last year were about $260 billion, okay, added from those refunds. But what happened last year was that, you know, we were also in the midst of a monetarist panic because of the Fed raising rates. But I've been all through that, all right? Next week is the Fed meeting on Wednesday. The market right now is pricing in a 25 basis point rate hike. Uh, which I would be surprised if, if it does not go 20, like if it goes 50, I would be surprised just because this Fed, the Powell Fed, if they have shown themselves to be anything, it's like they're just slaves to the market. They just do whatever the market price is in. I mean, 
again, I've used the analogy in the past, you know, when you're talking about a monopolist that sets prices. Um, so the analogy I've used in the past is, can you imagine uh, John D. Rockefeller, the guy who created Standard Oil, you know, in the late 19th and then early 20th century, a monopoly. Imagine if Rockefeller went around to all his little competitors and asked them, oh, gee, what price should, should I set my oil at, sir? Little competitors who he, no, he crushed them. He took them out of business. He said, you know, you give me your assets and I'll give you some shares. Otherwise, you're out of business. I'm going to crush you. That's what a monopolist has the power to do, but not these guys. He's got power. Anyway, so the Fed will do that next week. The, the, uh, and um, <laughs> when they go 25 basis points, the monetarists, the, the, the bears who are still there, and there are plenty of them, believe me, there's still plenty of bearish bets out there. But some of them you're going to see slowly but surely now, they're going to start throwing in the towel little by little like this guy at Goldman here. I guess you could call him smart, right? Uh, among that group, among that group of zombies, you know, I guess we would have to say he's one of the smarter ones because he's throwing in the towel early. Um, but I think what's going to happen, and it's going to be hilarious, and I said this yesterday, and I, for me personally, I'm going to make money from it, and I know my subscribers are going to make money from it. When it comes to June and the real you-know-what hits the fan with the, with the debt ceiling and they don't do it and they go into full-blown austerity, you know, and then when, when the, the numbers start to get really negative, I'm talking about economic numbers, and all of these zombies are going to think, oh, this is fantastic because now the Fed's going to have to cut rates. It's not going to help them out. I mean, now you're talking about a real economic contraction that could last, that can go deep and last for a long time. Hopefully it doesn't come to that. They may, may, who knows, maybe they'll do something with the debt ceiling. Maybe it'll be all resolved. I hope so, because I think, um, you know, th things are actually looking pretty good, as I've been telling you. That's why these some of these zombies are starting to throw in the towel right now. And, and even though they don't understand why, and the only thing they, they have to, as an explanation is like, gee, it doesn't look like it wants to go down. That's your sophisticated analysis, okay? That's Goldman Sachs. If you were to ask, uh, or if you were, to, if someone were to ask you, who do you think is the top, top, top Wall Street investment bank? The first thing that most people are going to say is Goldman Sachs, and that's the kind of uh, uh, analytics you get out of them. All right. Anyway, I think I'm charged up because I went out in the desert and I had a great time today. And uh, I don't know if I'm so charged up about going back to New York. I'll tell you that. But uh, I'm going there tomorrow. So uh, we'll revert back to the normal schedule. Anyway, that's it for today, folks. Have a nice weekend and uh, probably see you on Monday. Bye-bye.